Aries, listen, welcome to Purse First Impression. My name is Bob the Drag Queen. I have a very special guest, Miss Candy Muse. But before we get started, please like, comment, subscribe. Also, comment below. Tell us which look was your favorite on the runway. I am so excited to be joined by one of the most iconic um, <laughs> stars of Untucked to ever be on RuPaul's Drag Race. Please welcome <laughs> to your screens the one and only Miss Candy Muse, honey. Ah, what is the tea, honey? <laughs> <laughs> now, Candy, first of all, let's just start off by saying, what are you thinking of this season? How do you feel about this season so far? You know, at first, I was really worried because I was like, I don't know any of these girls. How is it going to go? But I think going into the season, not expecting anything from anyone, you kind of have fun watching the season, and they kind of, the girls kind of surprise you as the weeks go by. And so far, four, four episodes in, I'm fully into it. I am invested. I'm having a great time with the girls. And I really, really think that this is, like, a fresh, like, I'm, well, they're obviously a fresh, brand new batch of girls. Yeah. But it feels like a fresh batch of girls. It feels light and airy if that makes sense well i mean this is your now this is your first year watching drag race post being on the show like so Correct. how does it feel to be one of the girls from one of the quote <clears throat> older seasons <laughs> older seasons well you know i'm not from no season eight but now that i am from the older seasons <laughs> <laughs> no you know it's really interesting watching the season now as a viewer because i remember Specifically this weekend, and I just got a reminder on my phone, um, last year was the weekend that me and Tamisha got into it and I'm talked. Wow. Um, so this weekend last year, I was fighting for my life. Me and my friend, me and my fans were in the trenches last year on this time. So it feels nice to just watch it as a viewer. Um, it feels, yeah, I am enjoying it. So I just want to get start off from the top. Okay, at the very top of the episode, I am so gagged right now at Jasmine Kennedy in this this is wild like this is so one of the girls goes who thought they should have won and then jasmine kennedy starts crying because she was safe and she thought that she should have won what are you thinking when you watch this okay i can't be too mad on jasmine because i remember uh during the ball episode specifically when i got called safe and i got to untucked i remember being like i'm fucking pissed i should be in the top for some reason new york girls always want to be in the top when it comes to the ball episode or when it comes to anything they never want to be safe i don't know if i would have cried for being safe because the way i see it is yeah safe isn't the best place to be all the time but baby you get to be in the competition for an extra week so what are we crying about? So now, in the midst of this talking, Cornbread is fed up. She has had it. So then the so but then once Cornbread chimes in, all the girls are like, you know what? Now that you mention it, bitch, I'm sick of you talking too. It always takes one girl to start it off. Once one girl starts, every single bitch in the room has an issue with you. <laughs> like I was I was gagging that Cornbread called her out in front of everyone. I was kind of like, oh my god, this is getting wild. It, it was, it was, it was a little uncomfortable. I'm not gonna lie. It was the top of the morning. I was like, I don't think we've ever had an intro to Drag Race where it's like it's a brandy day in the workroom, and suddenly we're getting into some drama. I was like, oh, this is news. I, you know what? I live for the bluntness of it all because I'm a very blunt person. I don't know necessarily if I would have called out Jasmine for talking too much because I feel like at some point I'm like am I talking too much or y'all not talking enough because like so I agree so there's there's a thing y'all realize when you when we walk into the workroom bitch it is like nine o'clock in the morning maybe or I can't even remember how long ago it was but you wake up at like seven to get to the to the place at nine it is like 9 a.m and these bitches are fighting they are fighting before hey, listen if you're fighting and mcdonald's is still selling breakfast we need to discuss what's going on <laughs> so Matt and willow are Wait the up. team captains Matt and willow are the, are the team captains and now when it comes to getting picked and getting picked last you know one girl's always going to get do you remember how you how you how you placed in the pickings okay so on my season we didn't really have challenges where we picked our group so oh. i never got to experience that we were always placed together or um it just you know we were never now i know how to been my season i would have never been picked last because we would have had a fucking issue <laughs> in the workroom um but i can't even imagine how awkward it is to be standing there as everyone's being called and you were just on the other side of the workroom by yourself 
And the fucked up part is that not not only did no one choose you, but now you have to pick which team to go to, and neither of them want you. And she decides to go on the team that Cornbread's on, and Cornbread is immediately like, oh my God, I do not want to be on a team with this bitch. So then we get into the challenge, and then <clears throat> there's like, there comes a point where I'm like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> like, leave this bitch alone. She's like, stop writing, start writing. If you write, you're not paying attention. You need to be doing this. I was like, girl, <laughs> let this girl do her challenge how she wants to do her. You, you're you not supposed to be micromanaging. <laughs> However, if she wants to write, let this bitch write. Why do you care <laughs> if she's writing? Yeah, I was a little confused by that because... um. You're on opposite sides of the table, and it's, it's like at this point now, you're looking for something to be upset at with the poor girl. You know, she's already saying, I'm going to write my questions down, I'm not going to talk, I'll leave them all for the end, and then you want her to write, and then you want her to listen, but then you want her to not write, but then don't look at me, and don't breathe, and don't blink, and it's like, let's <laughs> calm down. Yeah, it's like every <laughs> time this bitch, bitch, why are you breathing? Bitch, stop breathing. That shit pissed me <laughs> off. I don't want you. Don't breathe no more. No more breathing and shit. That shit. That shit annoys me. I was like, this is this is getting a little wild. So so th th this thing it kind of fizzles out a little bit. But then we go into the challenges. So they're they're filming these <clears throat> these like intros. You know the the super teasers. Like this is gonna be the RuPaul every year, the gaggiest season ever. I think that this challenge would have been super easy and fun to do because you're just overacting. In reality, mm -hmm. you're you're making a super trailer, and when you watch a trailer before the season, you're like, "Oh, bitch, it's gonna be juicy, and the drama's gonna be everything." So, I, for me personally, I think it would have been a super easy challenge. Um, I I wish I wish we would have had this on my season. Well, bitch, you did it without even knowing it. You you accidentally helped make a super teaser. <laughs> <laughs> who do you think was doing really good in the two? Who who stood out for you in the um, performances in the videos? In both groups, yeah. Um, I really like. There's something about Nigeria that I it's it's so endearing to me. And every time she applies herself to the challenge, it is just like a gold star for me. I love. Oh, yeah. uh, I adore Nigeria or Angie. I thought she was really, really, really good. Um, I thought. Who else stood out besides Angie? Oh, Maddie was good as well. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I also really like Jasmine Kennedy as well. Oh, work. I I was a big fan of Angie was great. I thought that Angie mm. and Deja were actually the best ones. And they were oh, both Deja was really good too. Like it like it, it it felt natural. And I don't know, I don't know who came up with that line, but saying I was born at a very young age. That shit, that shit tickled me. I don't know who came up with that. I don't know whose idea it was, but that was very, very funny. And I also think that um, Maddie and Willow did well. Like, there were a lot, for me, though, those four, there were a lot of people. Maddie, Willow, Angeria, and um, Deja all did a really good job this week. All right, let's go into what people really want to hear about, which is our thoughts on the way <laughs> the dolls look. They really want to know how we feel about the looks on the main stage of RuPaul's Drag Race. So let's let's give the children what they want. Let's let's dive in, honey. Let's dive into Night of the Thousand J Lo. Yeah. So how do you, are you? Are you you're you're from the Bronx, yeah? Okay, I'm from the Bronx, born and raised. I love J-Lo. I've always campaigned for J-Lo to do the Super Bowl prior to her doing it. On that note, I don't know how many iconic looks J-Lo has in order to have a thousand night of J-Lo runway. Mm, that's just me. You know, I, I'm not saying you're wrong. Um, I, I think of J-Lo in, uh, was it Cell? She was in the movie, the horror movie Cell she did. That one was with the, with the, with the, the, the little the harness thing on the yeah. face, the red collar. That look is over. Obviously, the, the Versace dress. <laughs> if you want Google images, obviously that one, clearly. And, and Cell was the one that no one did. And a couple of Met Gala moments, you know, as well. But it, it, have you ever seen J Lo on the Six Train? By the way, yeah, girl, all the time. <laughs> she worked the Six Train. She runs it. She's a conductor. She likes stay close. Girl, the door. next stop <laughs> is Hunts Point, bitch. <laughs> so uh, let's start with the RuPaul's look. I really, I actually like this look. I think that um, it, it, she looks young. Something about this headband on her forehead and giving this '80s vibe makes her look very young to me. I love it. I love the hair color on her. I love this. This outfit almost kind of reminds me of the promo for um, 
UK versus the world. A little bit. I can see that too. <clears throat> like Gladiator, oh, yeah. Warrior. Maybe this is the outfit like she was it. supposed to wear for that, but then it came too late. So she just, <laughs> so she wore the black dress instead. <laughs> Also, Lenny no, Love no. said full drag. Lenny Love said, bitch, I'm doing drag drag. I mean, she's wearing the sequins. She has the she had big makeup on. I was like, Lenny? Her makeup. That's one thing we said. We were like, who the Lenny Love's drag makeup? She looks so good. I mean, I just say I adore, adore Lonnie Love. <laughs> All right, let's go into the girls. So we have um up first, we have Miss Willow Pill, who has uh chosen to do this. I don't, I'm not sure where these looks are from. We don't. Oh, the Grammys 1998. So Grammys she's doing, 1998. Honestly, this is almost a this is almost like a, a an exact replica, and it looks it. She killed it. I loved it. I love everything that she did. I love the hair, the color of the hair, the little up like the little messy updo, very 90s. Yeah. The dress, the curve, it hits her curve really nice. I don't know how I feel about those um, shoes with the butterflies. I think they're the same shoes that J-Lo wore, though. Maybe J-Lo has the same shoes. Are they? Oh, I think that it is. But you know what? J-Lo has her toes out. Yeah, that was she does. There it is. All right, let's, let's move on to Cornbread. So Cornbread chose to do um, Heavenly Bodies Met Gala 2018. And I this is, like again, this. you don't I need don't you know, do you like the original? I like the original. I don't like the one Cornbread has on. What is it about you don't like? Okay. I feel so bad because I am a Cornbread stan. Like, mm -hmm. that's my go for the win. I, the, first of all, the hair, the flat hair is a no for me. And I've been seeing that there is a trend on this season. And granted, when they filmed this uh, in the drag community, the trend was flat with hair, flat mm -hmm. human hair. Great. I don't like to see flat, wet hair on Drag Race. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. Cornbread has on this flat hair. As big girls, if we're going to wear a, a turtleneck situation, we need the hair out of our face. So it looks like we have a neck. Mm -hmm. Because now you have a turtleneck and flat hair on your, on your over here. And now you're, girl, now you're a no-neck monster. Now you have no neck. Now what? Yeah, I mean, I gotta say, I don't, I, I don't understand why Cornbread wants to wear this hair. Of all, like this, it, I mean, I get, it, I get, it. it's because J Lo wore the hair. I get it. You're trying to recreate what J Lo did, so I understand. Because her hair is also the, it's like the dark roots with the blonde on the end. I get, I, I do agree with you. Maybe this was like the best choice for uh, Miss Bread, um, and this is not showing her in her best light. Also, J Lo's cross is massive. It goes from Huge. nipple to nipple. It covers her entire torso. Yeah, it goes from nipple to nipple, from like from hyoid all the way down to her belly button. Like, it is a massive, massive cross, and uh, Cormorant has just like this tiny little, I mean, comparatively, a tiny little cross in the middle of hers. So let's move on to Lady Camden. Lady Camden has chosen to do uh, J-Lo at the CFDA Awards, the Council of Fashion Designer Awards in 2019. This is obscure. This is very obscure, right? <laughs> it's one of those looks where it's just like, just the look you chose. Work. Yeah. However, why would you choose this look? Like, why would you choose this one? It's very, it's a very weird look. However, I love something about Lady Camden, her body type. She dresses almost like a a stripper sometimes, which I love, love, love. Um, the This pant situation happening with that, uh, uh, what do you call that, a cape? It's like, it's like a, it's like a peplum. A train. Train. A peplum train. Yeah. I'm obsessed with this. I don't know if I really love the top part. I think it could have been a little more draggy for the runway, but I love the bottom part. I love the bottoms. Yeah, I don't love this fabric. I think I'm realizing I just don't like a lot of JLo stuff. <laughs> I don't love this fabric <laughs> choice. I don't love. Um, I'm just not. I'm just not in love with this, and and it's not her fault because I don't think I. I don't think I like the source material either. Like when I'm looking at the the, the original picture, I'm like I don't. I don't think I like that either. So maybe it's not her. Maybe it's just the yeah, outfit. yeah. No. Oh, and I also hated her hairline, but that's me being nitpicky right now. What's wrong with the hairline? Lady Candace's hairline. Yeah. What's wrong with it? Um. I just don't like it. 
<laughs> All right, let's move on to Bosco. Um, okay, Bosco had such a strong start. Is it just me or is she fading away? Is she fading into the background a little bit? I don't want to say she's fading. I want to say she's taking her time to let the girls know who she is. Because she's taking herself. There's something, there's something about Bosco. I've worked with her before. She's a sweet girl. I love her. There's something so mysterious about her that I'm obsessed with. Mm-hmm. That she can literally say two words in an entire episode, and I'm like, okay, work. Um, also, I was gonna say, I guess when it comes to a, a, a night of a thousand runways, when when the look comes out in the runway, we're supposed to pinpoint like, oh, that's a J Lo look. Um, mm-hmm. I can't do that with half of these looks because I don't know what J Lo wears on a daily basis. But looking at Bosco's look, I can't tell that this is a J Lo look. However, she looks stunning. You know, I disagree. I do like. First of all, here are my problems with this. Like J Lo is wearing like what looks like a very expensive like velour or velvet, and Bosco looks like she's wearing a four way stretch. And also the fact that her titties are just in the middle of her chest with nothing around. It just, it just looks like a hamburger cut in half, put in each spot. There's no titty on either <laughs> side. It would not kill Bosco to wear a, a. I mean, everyone. I don't. Everyone doesn't have to wear body. It wouldn't kill her either cinch in or wear a little bit of a hip. Let's move on to Carrie Kobe, who is wearing the actual dress from the Versace Spring 2020. So this is the actual dress that J-Lo wore j- just two years ago um, during well, lockdown. She, 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 she went to Versace and said, I'm going to borrow this. Yeah. So, he, okay, here's my thing. It, it actually, I mean, I have very few, no- like, it looks good. My only thing is that, like, Clearly, Carrie Kobe is taller than J Lo because J Lo's <laughs> slit goes down to her belly button, and Carrie's goes to like it's just it's just higher. But besides that, she looks. Oh m- yeah, I see that. But besides that, she looks. I I, I I I think it is impressive that she was able to get this dress. But I would have liked it even more if it was just if it was actually remade for her. Like I would have liked it better if it was like made specifically for her. Yes and no. I don't mind the fact that she borrowed the dress. I do see how the slit goes all the way down on J Lo, um, and it's a little higher on Carrie. I think that it works better on Carrie because her legs are so long. I don't even mind um, the fact that the hair on her and J Lo are different. I actually like the fact that she did some different hair. She's like it gives her more of a Carrie Colby twist to the whole J-Lo look. <laughs> Let's move on to Georges. Georges is doing uh, J-Lo Super Bowl 2020. You know, he... Off the bat, I'm going to say this. Say it. Say it. Is that supposed to be a new illusion? Yeah, see, this is... See, but this is... Okay, in her defense, I'm going to say this. Sometimes stuff films different than it looks in real life. Because there was a period of time where I kept thinking to myself, why do all these girls tights not match their skin but in person it might match it's just something about the lights hitting them i do wish that she would have used a shinier nude illusion um because it 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 it, it, it does look i mean this is drag but it looks okay. like a drag costume like a not a great drag costume but if you know anything about shopping for fabrics I, when it comes to buying new illusions i always go one shade darker mm-hmm. for that sick for that exact reason of flash the lights you want it to match your skin so you get what well, you know same thing that we do with foundation so there's no i don't uh, mm, 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 mm. i think she looks gorge though but that's the one thing that i noticed and it, it took me out of the fantasy it threw me off she doesn't look bad i don't think she looks bad but it's is it is oh, she never looks bad she always is gorgeous yeah georgia's George is very is. pretty yeah uh let's and move the on is gorge. jasmine kennedy uh, so Jasmine Kennedy decides to do 2015 American Music Awards. It is a very conservative J Lo look. She is covered from the neck to the mid calf, and I, I really like this look. I think it looks great. I said yeah when I watched it. This was in my top three looks. I love the fact that she even added the pockets to it because mm-hmm. I don't know if J Lo had pockets of hers. The fact that she had the pockets and the bun with the little messy baby hairs out, the nude Louboutin. Oh my god, I just look stunning. So Maddie Morphis, when when she walks, for me, it just doesn't give. Like she needs to work on her runway walk for me. Yeah, she walks like a straight boy in uh, heels. Someone said it looks like she's uh, on Celebrity Drag Race. <laughs> Which, I, <laughs> you know how the celebrities walk when they get put in drag on Celebrity Drag Race? It's giving that. 
it's giving it's giving um the makeover challenge if she was made up very much so um but that being said i just i don't know this wasn't okay i'm trying to think i i haven't even given the thought process of what look i would have done but i would i just would not have chosen this one no and looking at the side by sides JLo was more sheer on the top and it wasn't as much JLo is covered in hers but if you look at JLo's and look at Maddie's Maddie is fully covered where you can't see any type of skin with JLo you can see some skin um there was some there were different patterns um and fabric so that it separates all the, the white it, mm, I agree it's safe it's cute it, it's not even safe. It looks like Maddie is like headed to the. This is what Maddie wears like on the way to the club. Like if I saw this queen on the train wearing this, I'd be like, oh, well, she's gonna change clothes when she gets to the club. Clearly, yeah, there's, yeah. there's no way she's wearing. There's no way she's wearing this on stage. Look, let's move on to Deja Sky, who decided to do J Lo from the Super Bowl 2020, which is like this Versace moment that J Lo is doing. And she, she, I think she took the most liberties when it came to recreating a look. I mean, that fabric, that Versace inspired fabric, is probably very hard to find. Um, well, well, it's I, well, we, we have them here in New York City or at, on on Thirty Eighth Street. That is true. However, other, yeah, I do find um, fake Versace prints to be really tacky. So I'm kind of happy she didn't go in that route. Um, I like the fact that she took. This look from J Lo and made her whole. And may I just say, Deja looks stunning. Yeah, the hair, the makeup, the body. I do think her highlight is a little bit bright sometimes. She needs to like blend that out. But I think she looks stunning. I I love the gold. the The cape was huge. Yeah, I loved it. I think she looks stunning. I love 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 everything about it. It's not an exact replica. And I don't need it to be. Yeah, I actually, I actually really, I mean, I would say that if I saw this, I would never in a million years think to myself, oh, this is like J-Lo's. Even if I saw J-Lo's and knew it well, I wouldn't think about it. But I, that all that being said, she looks very good. Let's move on to really Dia Betty. So Dia Betty decided to do, to do J-Lo from the Super Bowl in 2020. How many outfits did J-Lo wear the Super Bowl in 2020? So J-Lo had on that, the one Dia has on, that was the one that J-Lo walked out on. And then Got the one... It. That George's has on, Jello had under that black uh, leather um, bodysuit situation happening. And when did she put on the one Deja has on? Deja. Oh, wait. I don't think that one was from. Okay, so the one Deja has on, I'm not sure that's from the Super Bowl because I don't remember that. I don't know. I'm but, not sure what it's from. Our notes say that it is from the Super Bowl. Um, I don't know if Jacob can confirm or deny, but I'm like, how many outfits did she wear at the fucking Super Bowl? Maybe that's what they said on set, but I don't remember recall that from Super Bowl. Um, however, the one Daya has on, I'm actually... It's cute. If I saw her in the club or in this, I think it was, I think it was cute. I mean... Uh, it, it is very close to the one JLo's wearing. I, also, <laughs> I love that that's your analogy for everything. You're like, if I saw her in the club wearing this. Yeah, I, I always think to myself, like, if I just saw this girl out wearing this, would I be like, oh, work, this looks nice? Or would I be like, sure, or would I be like, gross? I'd be like, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't be gagged. I'd be like, oh, this is a decent outfit. But I also don't think that I particularly love the original that much either. So I think, I think for this challenge for me, it's just the source material I'm not in love with. So let's move on to Angie, who is at this point, my favorite to win. She's doing um, Met Gala 2019, which was the camp uh, Met Gala theme. And uh, this looks great. She looks really good. Angie Angie understands. I think I do think Angie's titties are a little high. They are like up. They're like Angie's titties are like here. <laughs> like when you look at Angie, <laughs> her titties are like, <laughs> I'm like, girl, tug them a little bit, girl. Titties go. I mean, titties can be in a lot of places, but this this, this is a little wild. You know, this was one of the looks where I was most scared for a girl to do because when it comes to an outfit with a bunch of glass fringe that is not cheap, and, um, you know, I was like, oh, girl, someone's going to do it, and it's a little cheap and tacky, and, like, ugh, it's, 
She turned it. So yeah. let's move on to Alyssa Hunter, who has decided to do J Lo from the 2018 Billboard Award, which is a very um. This looks like a Calvin Klein suit, but it might not be. It's a very butch, uh, like a uh, Dick Tracy style almost thing. Again, I gotta be honest. I just I didn't even love it on J Lo. Is it horrible that I don't? <laughs> is that really? So bad? Yeah, I just didn't. I love. Her. I love, love, love. I wish the pants would have hit the floor. If you're going to do this huge bell bottom moment, um, I don't see why the pants are just right above your your heel. I, If it's not going to hit the floor or midland, the girl just don't worry because I don't want to see no high waters. Well, I wonder where the pants was I, on J-Lo. I wonder where J-Lo pants hit, you know? True, maybe. But I want to say I love this on the list. And she took the liberty of opening her coat and there was that whole uh, stone diamond corset she had me under. I don't know if J-Lo had that. I don't think she does because I'm looking at J-Lo and she has on a suit and tie here yeah, and a button down. But I thought it was so great. I thought she was gorgeous. I preferred it with the jacket open and the stoned bodice and the stone corset. I actually preferred it that way more than, than the original in the suit. Oh, right. yeah, 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 yeah. So let's go on to... A Ryan story who is wearing a look that JLo wore at the Human Rights Coalition dinner in 2013, or the Human Rights Campaign dinner, sorry. The Human Rights Campaign dinner in 2013, which by the way, this is actually probably one of my favorite looks JLo's ever worn. I, I, I didn't know that this look existed. I wasn't I wasn't aware of this look, but it's one of my favorite looks of hers. Um, and I think that Orion looks, looks good. I think that she looks good. Orion does very understated eye makeup. It's almost like it's like if you stand far enough back, it just looks like eyebrows and lashes. Um, yeah, but I think this looks good though. Um, yeah, it's cute, and she's a cute girl, cute next to gorgeous. Well, do you have a favorite look? If I was gonna pick one, it would have to be. Oh shit! I'm, I'm gonna go with Jasmine Kennedy. I'm going to give it to Jasmine, too. So the bottom two are Carrie Colby and Alyssa Hunter. They do a lip sync together. And <clears throat> at first I was nervous for Carrie because she was like, bitch, I can't even lip sync in this outfit. And I was like, if she fucks this outfit up, this is going to be. Oh, baby. But I would have been on Drag Race like, bitch, fuck this fucking outfit. I don't give a mother fuck. I would have been like, fuck this garment, honey. I am going to win this lip sync is what I do now. Oh, yeah, if I was in that moment and, you know, when you're in the bottom two, you, you kind of forget it all. I would be like, girl, I'm going to go in. Like, if the dress breaks, the dress breaks. It is what it is. Yeah, I, I'll, fi- I'll figure that out when I get home. But, um, but that being I, said. It was pretty even up until Alyssa's gun didn't work. Up until no, Alyssa's gun. No, no. I thought it was even. You didn't think so? I thought. Alyssa was turning it. She had the J-Lo moves and it was given very, it was, it was given J-Lo. She was turning it. I don't think that that gun stunt was enough to set her home. See, okay, let, let me think back because I remember watching it at one point. There was a, okay, let me think really hard about this. There was a point where I kept thinking to myself, I, I, Carrie might go home tonight. Carrie Michael because of, because she was she was too concerned. Maybe I'm just it looked like she was very concerned with the garment and yeah. how it was gonna if it was gonna break. Alyssa throwing herself on the ground. She was dancing. She was doing a very good job. But I do think that gun stunt it, it took me out. Like when you're watching someone perform and then something goes wrong like that, it's it you get this secondhand embarrassment. Like you're <sighs> embarrassed. Like you're you're uncomfortable watching it happen. You're like ugh. Cause she thought she was gonna eat. She's like, "I'm about to eat." Then she picked it up, and, she, and then it just and then and then, then, was, fly, then the money fell out of the top. And she was like, "Okay, I'll grab it and try to throw it." It, it wasn't quite like when Sonique tripped and rolled. It was like she tripped, but then she kind of hit the ground, but then kind of rolled. But also, um, and so she gets she gets eliminated. Carrie gets to stay, and then RuPaul makes Alyssa promo her candy bar. Girl, this candy bar shit is too much. I every time I'm gagged. It is wild. I cannot even imagine being eliminated and then told to open the candy bar with hopes that there is a golden ticket in there. And this bitch goes, it's just chocolate. And I've heard a rumor that that the candy bars are plastic. They're not even real chocolate. I, I can see that. Just so that they won't melt on set. Yeah. But, like, 
I'm just like, this candy bar business is, and you know what? I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. If Orion or Daya end up with that fucking gold candy bar, I'm going to lose my fucking shit. If one of the girls who's already gone home oh, get yeah. that fucking golden candy bar and come back again, I'm going to lose it. The girl I would wish to have the golden ticket would be like uh, Angie or a Willow or maybe a, uh, you know, a girl that, but it's random, uh, random. So you, we don't know who has it. Yeah, I would want it to be Cornbread, Bosco, Angie, or Oh, yeah, Willow. or Cornbread or Bosco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I would want to have it. I'm like, one, if one of the, anyone else, I'm like, I'm mad. I'm mad. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I will talk to you all next week and I have another very special guest. Candy, you're an icon. Where can the kids find you? You can find me across all social medias under The Candy Muse. It's literally, I lucked out. I got the same name on every single app. I don't know how it happened, but it did. So that's Candy with a K, Candy Muse. Thank you so much. Listen, we want to join the conversation with you online. So please use the hashtag purse first impressions. Hashtag purse first impressions. I will be joining you in the conversation on Twitter. Um, and we will see you all later. Bye.